Welcome to the VIP Masterclass Series. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode comes from Michael, and he says, I have some questions about the B-flat major fugue from Bach uh, from Well-Tempered Clavier Book 1. My first question is when there are three voices, is the inner voice considered alto or tenor because it covers the range of both? So the question, the answer to that is it just depends. Usually it's, um, if it's like a three voice fugue, uh, which this uh, is, you would just probably look at the ranges of the voices and if it's more of an alto range of what someone could sing, you could call it alto. If not, you could call it tenor. It doesn't really matter to be honest. So that's kind of <laughs> the, the lame answer to your question is it really doesn't matter. Um, you could just call it either. You could say, oh, it's the alto voice and keep referring to it as the alto or call it the tenor and keep referring to it as tenor. I've been told it's always good to go through and be able to play all the voices individually so you can hear them. I agree. Uh, also to play one voice and sing another. That's true. That is a pain in the butt. I don't personally do that, but it's great if you can do that. It's a lot of work, but I think it's well worth it. Sometimes when all voices aren't present, it's challenging to figure out what part the voice is, and sometimes they cross over into another voice's range. I think for the most part, it's clear in the B-flat fugue, but not so much in the A-flat fugue, because we had corresponded a little bit about the A-flat fugue. If you have any tips on how to be sure about which voice is which, that would be great. Uh, to be honest, I would just play them individually and then add them in different combinations. So with this being a three-voice fugue, I'd play top, bottom, middle, probably in that order, and then I'd probably play the top two, and then top and bottom, then the middle and bottom, and then all three together so that you go through and you combine all of those voices. This is great to do in any piece that seems to be divided into three voices. Um, in certain pieces like Rachmaninoff, uh, Preludes for instance, it's all over the place. Sometimes there's one bass moving line and then he'll do a chord and then he'll do some extra stuff in the middle. So it's it's counterproductive to try to like discern, oh, this is the middle voice. Um, at that point, I just kind of do hands alone to hands together. But in something like a fugue, I think that's absolutely good advice. As far as, uh, so we corresponded and I said, you know, you kind of got to break it down to a part you want me to really cover because I can't do the whole thing in 15 minutes. So he says uh, maybe 33 um, and the following bars maybe all the way to the end, which would be to bar 48. Um, I'll try to get through that much. He says as far as measures 33 to the end, the double thirds and intervals switch back and forth between the hands. How did you decide which voice to bring out and how do you do it when the subject isn't present? So it really depends. Um, generally, if there's not the, if the subject is not present, I will usually just voice the top. So I believe you uh, are referring to bar 44 when it goes. You know, I think the top voice. You know, even though this voice is interesting, you know, I think I probably. I would probably do more of the top, just because our ears are always drawn to the top. Okay, would you use pedal with this and how to apply it? Um, here's my rule with Bach is a lot of people, there's two schools of thought. Purists who think you should do no pedal and no dynamics, and I just think, okay, if you're gonna do that, you might as well go play harpsichord. Um, so you can use pedal, you can use dynamics, but it needs to be very sparingly with your use of pedal. You don't want to blend harmonies together. So like with those thirds, I would never pedal them because you're blurring together seconds. Okay, so pedal, pedal, pedal. It's so fleeting that you could get away with pedal, 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 and then off if you absolutely needed them. I would rather have you not pedal the thirds. And so far as the rest of the piece, only the only places that I ever pedal is when I can't physically connect it perfectly in the hand. So on certain types of leaps, I'll use the pedal. We'll go through all of this in a minute. I just want to... Thank you so much for watching. I've listed two links in the description below. One of them is to download this full video that you've just watched the sample for. The other is to view the entire library of VIP Masterclass series videos. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.